Hello and welcome to The Chop Shop. My name is Dion Tucker. In this video, I want to pay tribute to the great Slide Hampton. The song that you heard me playing in the intro of this video is entitled My Blues, written by Slide Hampton. That was the first time that I ever heard Slide's music, and needless to say, I was hooked right away. In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of my own musical experiences with Slide, and I'm gonna share with you some of my photography as well, pictures that I've taken of Slide Hampton. Before we jump any deeper into that, I wanna thank everybody out there who continues to support the channel. If you've seen my videos before, you'll notice that this is a little different setup, but I'll get into that more in another video. In the meantime, if you haven't done so, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get a heads up on whenever I put out a new video. Now, as you can tell, I'm kind of a Slide Hampton super fan. I remember when my wife asked me who were five musicians that had the biggest influence on you. I had to think about it and I gave her the five names and she had this amazing t-shirt made for me, that being Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Thelonious Monk, J.J. Johnson, and of course, Slide Hampton. Now, Slide's music had an incredible impact on the music community. He was more than just a trombonist. He was an incredible arranger. He was an incredible composer and just really knew how to get his sound across in the music. Now, back when I was around 18 or 19 years old, I was gifted a picture by a fantastic photographer named Petra Richterova, and she took this picture of Slide Hampton. I used this picture as a reminder. For some reason, there was just something in his eyes when I would look in this picture, and something about it just said, practice. <laughs> now, I know Slide was practicing somewhere, I'm sure, because he practiced more than all of us. So it was a great inspiration to see his face in my practice room and just a little extra incentive to, hey, make sure you're practicing. That makes me think about a story to maybe one of the first times that I traveled anywhere with any band. It was with Frank Foster and the Loud Minority. And we took a, a trip on a jazz cruise. I believe it was called the SS Norway. And there was different groups on the cruise. And I remember Slide was part of a group that was on the cruise. It was about 2 a.m., long after all the performances were done. And I heard a trombonist practicing in his room. And I stood outside the door and listened closely. Of course, it was Slide in there practicing at 2 a.m. after the gig. So that just confirmed to me the kind of work ethic it takes in order to become a master of music like Slide Hampton. So the first time I really started checking out Slide Hampton's music, I was around 15 or 16 years old, and I had a tape of a bunch of trombone solos that my teacher made for me. Now I would go through, I'd listen to all of these different players, and Slide was one of the players that stuck out the most because Harmonically, he was playing totally different than anybody else I was listening to at the time. His solo on My Blues is a masterpiece, and I definitely recommend any trombonists out there learn at least the first couple of choruses. Now, fast forward many years later, those two choruses, those first two choruses of My Blues still stick with me. And I was lucky enough to see, come across this picture of the recording session from A Day in Copenhagen. And I noticed that Slide Hampton had a beret hat over his belt. And I saw that I'd heard about players using berets over their belt. So I asked my wife, who is extremely stylish, and berets happen to be part of her style. Hey, do you have a beret that I could use for my trombone just to see if I could emulate the sound? Fortunately, she had one that she wasn't using. So I inherited this beret here. And I put it over my trombone bell, and I was able to emulate the sound that Slide had on that Day in Copenhagen record 
a lot better. Check out these two choruses. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure if he had the beret over his mute throughout the recording, but if so, that would answer a lot of questions as to why his sound is really a little bit warmer on that record than some of the other recordings. Now, of course, the Day in Copenhagen record was not enough, so I made it a mission to find as many different Slide Hampton recordings as I could. Now, he didn't have as many recordings under his own name as, say, somebody like a J.J. Johnson, but that made me look a little bit deeper into other players' records. And whoever was leading the band, that really didn't matter. If Slide Hampton was on the recording, I was going to buy it. Now, I remember going to Slide's house to practice, and the first thing that jumped out to me was, man, this cat has a lot of music everywhere. There was sheet music all over the place. Handwritten ideas, scores, lead sheets. There was just music everywhere. But on top of some of this sheet music, I saw this photo and I had to take a picture of it. James Moody, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, and Slide Hampton. I mean, what, what kind of hang was that? <laughs> we all wish we could be a part of that. So I had to snap. I don't know who took that photo, but it was in Slide's private collection. Now, this was the view of me sitting in front of him. So as we were practicing, he was playing right to me. Was it intimidating? Uh, yeah, <laughs> to say the least. But to be that close, I mean, what a way to teach. There's no better way to teach music than to sit right in front of the person and play that language to them. And that practice session with Slide was a masterclass in how to have a conversation via music. So one of the highlights of my career so far was being part of the daytime Emmy nominated show, Harry. Harry Connick Jr. had the entire band on a daytime TV show with him. It was amazing to be a part of. And after a point in time, they were looking for some jazz legends to come on and make a guest appearance on the show with the band. I immediately thought Slide Hampton. So I did everything in my power to make sure that we could get Slide on the show and he could come on and play with the band. Now we had everything set up and ready to go, but unfortunately Slide was feeling a little bit under the weather that day. So he didn't wind up playing on the show, but he did come and attend in the audience. And it was really, really cool to look out in the audience and see Slide Hampton sitting right there watching us play. It, it was amazing. There was also another trombone legend who's up on my wall here. Lucian Barberin was part of the TV show. And unfortunately, Lucian has passed away, but I was able to snap this picture of these two legends. Now, I'm not sure if this is the first time they met, but man, was it special to see Lucian and Slide have an interaction. Now, if you take a look at my current practice space, Slide Hampton is still a huge part of my practice room. Instead of having the photo that I've had up in the past, when I was starting to put some art up on the wall, I was really thinking about who should go up there and what photos should I use? I looked at a bunch of different historical photos, and then I kind of thought to myself, wait a minute, Dion, you're a photographer. You have photos of everybody, especially some great photos of Slide Hampton. Many of you may not know that I have an extreme love for photography. In my early 30s, I started studying and taking pictures. I really took my camera with me everywhere I went, and I was just trying to capture some candid inside moments that other people might not get a chance to experience. I had a few unique opportunities to be really close to Slide Hampton while he was performing, and I happened to have my camera with me, so I got a few shots that are really special to me, some of which I like to share with you now. 
These first few photos I took are from Slide Hampton's birthday celebration at a club that was located in New Jersey called Trumpets. It's no longer there, but it used to be a spot where you could check out some good music in Montclair, New Jersey. I took the opportunity to get as close as I could without disturbing anybody in the audience, but with it being a trombone group, I was really intrigued as to the different types of photos that I was able to capture. Now, as you can see in this photo, everybody is paying attention to what Slide is doing. When Slide plays, you listen. You'll also notice the admiration from legendary trombonist Steve Teray in a few of those photos. Steve was my teacher and he was extremely close to Slide, so I was lucky to be in the room with two trombone masters. Now this next set of photos was from another Slide Hampton birthday celebration. This time this was in New York City with an all-star group of people like Steve Teray, George Coleman, Victor Lewis, they were all part of this band. I went there to check it out and man, Slide was on fire that night. I was really, really lucky to get even more up close and personal because in a few of these pictures, I was literally sitting right next to him while he was playing. Now, if you look at this photo, this one is my personal favorite of Slide. He happened to be sitting like in the audience playing towards the band. So I went up and I sat maybe about a chair or two away from him. And I put my camera lens down into the slots of the chair. And I took the picture through that. So those lines that you see there is actually a chair, like the slits in a chair in the foreground. And it goes to Slide's face. This is really one of the, my favorite photos that I've ever taken, but it's especially my favorite photo of Slide. Now, I remember that night Slide was extremely passionate about speaking for equality towards women. So when he picked up the mic, he was talking about how to empower women and how we should respect women. So that's what he's saying here on the microphone. He was definitely letting people know how he felt. On this particular photo, I was a little further away. I was across the room, but it seemed like he was looking directly into my camera lens, through my camera lens into my soul. <laughs> it was almost creepy when I got the picture back and looked at it on my computer because it does look like he's looking right into my soul. I wanted to wrap up this tribute to Slide by sharing a clip with you from a performance I was honored to play at that took place in New Jersey a few years back. This was for a fundraiser for a great organization called Jazz House for Kids. Now, one thing you should know, and this is a tip for all you young and old musicians out there, when a jazz master plays, you don't play after him unless you have to. <laughs> so in this clip, Slide Hampton plays a solo and he pointed to me next to play after him. I would never do that voluntarily, but I had no choice. So here's a clip of Slide playing. I play a little bit after. I don't know what I was going for, but that's what came out. Let's check it out.
As you can tell, Slide Hampton has had a huge influence on me, not just as a trombonist, but as a person as well. He was so willing to share his knowledge with us. It, it was just a blessing for anybody that was able to spend some time around him. Now, I know we all have our favorite Slide Hampton stories and moments. I'd love to hear some of those. So go ahead and drop them in the comments there. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time at The Chop Shop. Thank you.